How many of you guys out there have experienced ageism? If any of you have said, oh, not me, well, then it's time to get out of your house and go experience the world, because ageism is everywhere. Hello and welcome to No Two Gays About It, the show for the over-50 gay male, hosted by two over-50 gay men. Hi, I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley, and a victim of ageism. As we all are, Michael, we, are. we need to start talking about this because apparently no one really wants to do that. And that's so, why we're here, right? Exactly. So before we like really delve into this, we've got to figure out where in our lives is ageism affecting us. True that. But before we get started, now would be a great time for you guys out there to click like and subscribe. And if you want to get a notification anytime a new video drops, ring that little bell. And uh, you'll be right on the same page as we are. Awesome. All right. So ageism, like I said, it is absolutely everywhere. Where is it actually? Definitely professional. Definitely you know, socially too. Without socially. A and yeah. not just about dating and relationships, but socially, social world out there. Uh, sexually. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Big time. Uh, in the medical world, everywhere you go. We are finding ageism. Yeah. So the medical profession is actually a good one. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to talking about that one as well. Well, let's jump right in there right now. So you tell me, where have you experienced ageism in the medical world? Well, knock wood, um, I don't have a lot of issues at the moment, but I have friends who are going through a number of different things. And um, they've experienced this thing where the doctor just sort of brushes them off because I... This is what this is their recount is that they feel the doctor knows there isn't that much time left for them. So they're like, eh, I, I'm moving on. This is what you do. Are you kidding? No, I swear to God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, a friend just had surgery and he said the doctor couldn't have been. I mean, doctors are kind of cold anyway. It's just the right. way it is. Um, and he was like the doctor. If he spent 30 seconds with him, it was like, oh, OK, my nurse will be in. See you later. Wow. Um and he felt that that was something that was definitely when he was younger, he didn't experience that from a doctor or any medical professional. They tend to spend more time with it with him than uh, this particular doctor did. And he said he's had this doctor for a couple of years now. And is the doctor younger than he is? Of course. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. OK. You know, with me, I have this. <laughs> I don't know how great it is because sometimes it gets way too personal. Um, this great doctor who, like a, two years ago, I went into him and was like, why can't I lose weight? And he was like, because you're old. And I was like, you, you're the same age. He goes, I know. That's why I can't lose weight either. Um, All right. So, you know, on, on that level, it's awesome to have a contemporary um, who sort of gets where you are because he's in the same right. place. Um, and he's been my doctor for about the last 15 years. So I'm kind of blessed with that. But um, okay. And that's why I go back to LA from Palm Springs, you know, to see my doctor just because I don't want to have to deal with a younger doctor here and someone getting to know me. I mean, once you find the doctor that you really click with, it's, you know, great to stay with them. Yeah. Uh, but if you're finding a doctor our age, well, then they're, they tend to be retiring. So, yeah. you know, uh. um, all right, let me tell you a couple of places in this medical world where I have experienced ageism. Um, I'm really, really fortunate. I'm very healthy. I take absolutely no medication. And I normally only go see my doctor once a year for my physical. And this past time, you know, I get brought in and the young nurse, female nurse, is doing the intake, asking questions, whatever. She looks at my thing and then she looks over at me and says, Aw, you don't take any medication. Good for you. In that patronizing way, I wanted to stand up and go, Bitch? <laughs> yeah, something, right? <laughs> But in that sing-songy voice that you know she talks to every old person yeah. with, oh my God, I was like, seriously? It's funny. It's almost like we become a pet where they use that same voice that they do on their dog where it's like, oh, and, aren't you cute? Right? Yeah, so you can now, still walk upright. <laughs> Yay, good for you. Oh, even better. So, okay, on my when I had my last colonoscopy, because we are over a certain age and we have to have those. Um, so the guy, you know, there, I wake up and there's a male nurse standing there, uh, you know, who's going to be there while I get dressed or whatever to make sure I'm okay. 
So I get up and I just grab my clothes and I get dressed and he's like, oh, you're so strong. Oh my God. I'm like, what? He's like, well, you got dressed all by yourself. And oh I was my like, God. Oh my God. I am not ancient. Seriously. Like, well, you know, in the eyes of a 20 or 30 year old, I guess we really I know. are. <laughs> but I, get, I mean, I totally yeah. get that. But, but do you have th- to be condescending? That's the thing. Yeah. Both times. I think it's very kind of them to want to talk to an older person in a very sweet, gentle way. But read the room, guy. Yeah. Like, I jumped up and got dressed. Okay. I'm not feeble. Don't talk to me that way. You know? Yeah. Really pissed me off. Uh, so maybe, I mean, I, I, and then I guess thinking while I was on my way home, thinking like, did I, did I used to talk to old people like that? You know, is it just something that a younger person does? You you think you're showing them respect, but it's really not. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a difference between respect and condescension. I was going to say condensation. <laughs> well, that too. Being condescending. <laughs> We're old. We kind of leak we everywhere, leak from right? We places that we shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, all of this, joking aside, I, we are finding this ageism, whether it be younger doctors or nurses or, you know, as we're aging, yeah, everyone's going to be younger than us. But do we really have to be treated as these feeble-minded, imbecile, whatever, you know? No, and I'm sorry. I think back in our day, back in our day, um, we had a respect and a reverence for people who were older. I think that has gone away with the younger generations for some reason, and that would fall into the social aspect. Of yeah, that, this I, it's funny. I, I, that just clicked in me as well. Yeah. Um, so socially, yes, where we older gay men are finding ageism in the social world, right? Um, just going out to bars or out to places, you're treated differently by, you know, younger gay men. Um, but, but, you know, we you, tend we, to treat ourselves differently as well. There's this thing called internalized gay ageism. Um, and it is about how we perceive ourselves as well. So we have to remember that's a kind of a link in that social chain is how we present ourselves and how we represent ourselves um, as valuable individuals within the community. Because I think for a lot of men our age, we tend to feel irrelevant or unseen. And that's a, you know, that has a ripple effect outward. Right. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, we can't solve the problem. No. Uh, obviously, but let's just keep talking about like, where is this problem? So socially, I, this is something, you know, you, which is great. You just brought up how we perceive ourselves, but a lot of ageism is being hurled at those older gay guys who are trying to be 20 years old, Yeah, you know, with they're dressing younger and they're dyeing their hair and they're trying to be like, Oh, I'm, I'm hip and using the cool lingo that the kids are using. And, that's when the younger gays are looking at them going like, oh, my God, you know, as opposed to just owning your age and being these mature, charming men that we are. Uh, I think that would garner more respect than, you know, wearing Daisy Dukes in a yeah. crop top and trying to be 20. Or a know. shirt that's three sizes too small. Leave that for the younger generation. Um, right. You know, I... I We've talked about this in the past. I have friends that span every generation. um, And I have a number who are in their late 20s. And, you know, one of the nice things they say to me is it's really easy to be around you because you sort of just are you. um, And have had conversations with me about sometimes if they're out in a bar and someone older approaches them and, you know, they're just being, they're trying to be something that they're not because they feel like that's, who they have to be, they have to act younger, they have to have, right. act hip, or they have to be sexually overt to, you know, people who may not be interested. And uh, it's also something to keep in mind. For Well, I think that's it. It, it. As you said, it's our mindset. If we're thinking that we're these old people that sh- shouldn't, whatever, be out in public, then yeah, we're going to be treated that way. But also, if you're 
a person our age and you're acting like you're 20, then you're going to have that ageism put on you as well. Yeah. It, you know, it's owning everything you are. But besides socially, sexually is a place where ageism is found a lot. Um, I, uh, you can speak to this a little bit more than I can, but on the apps, um, from what I hear, no one really wants to connect with an older guy. We're, we're hearing that a lot from the, from the guys who are watching us and listening to us in their uh, comments that they're giving us that yeah. the apps just don't work for older guys. Um, so I have had the complete opposite experience. And we're also hearing from um, a lot of guys in the comments that they've just given up or they don't put their, themselves out there. And right. I think that that could be part of the problem because, and this is not a brag, but I get hit on a lot on the apps because there's a Good lot of Lord. folks out there who d do like older guys. Like I did when I was younger, I just, I would gravitate it toward older guys. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's just who I was. Um, and I, I think if you put yourself out there and you're genuine and represent who you are, I, I think your experience might change, honestly. Because again, I have not experienced that. I'm on the complete opposite end of that spectrum, where that okay. doesn't seem to be an issue. Okay, Daddy, that we're happy for you. That but... annoys me. <laughs> don't call well, me. You daddy. just said it. I never. I didn't say Daddy. I don't, no, I don't you like said that, that you word. like younger don't. men who all these. Younger I did not men say I like younger well, men. Good I said for when you. I, was old, I said when I was younger, I liked older men. I did not say <laughs> I liked younger men. Great, but ageism is being found in the sexual arenas out there. Yes. On the apps, if you are, does anyone put their age on, on apps? Uh, the majority of people put their age, and there's you know a lot of folks who put not into older guys or prefer guys under 40 or right. you know however you want to phrase it. And again, that's just a particular type. I'm not sure taking it personally is a, a good way to go. Well, I think we take everything personally, <laughs> you know, um, seriously, we do. Yeah. And, uh, I, I myself, though, I mean, when I was younger, I, I was not into daddies. I didn't want to be having sex with older men. I find I found older men a lot creepy, you know, uh, but like even somebody who was 10, 15 years older than you, you there, there was a creepiness to it with you. Um, well, if you are one of our Patreon members, then you can to hear all of our um bonus material and i did a whole savage side eye on the fact that when i was younger yeah i had a lot of creepy older men experiences that really bugged me okay. you know you know when i was younger i was not interested in in older guys but now at this age i could not imagine having getting naked with a 25 year old whose skin is completely taut and everything is where it's supposed to be you know <laughs> Uh, I would be constantly pulling parts of me up and covering other parts of me. So I don't see the intrigue of having sex with somebody younger. So I would not be opposed if they said, no, I'm not interested in you. Um, but many men are, and they are experiencing ageism uh, in the sexual arena. Without a doubt. There. And I guess, it's, you know, living in a, a city, we, we have a bigger pool to swim in. So maybe that's part of the reason as well yeah but our pool is swimming with walkers and canes so you know not yet not yet most of the pool out here are which is why i feel great about myself uh you know there is always going to be a lot of older guys than myself here in palm springs um but uh i do understand um so where else where have you uh experienced Ageism. This is the huge one for me because this this wasn't something I was expecting when I left LA and was sort of open to a career change, and that yeah. is career wise. It's it's been mind blowing, and yeah, I never gave it a second thought until I started sending resumes out, and I'm like, why isn't anybody responding? I have a pretty solid business background in management, and and then. I started talking to people here who were the same age and they're like, well, the reality is if they get a resume from somebody who they see has a work experience starting in the late 90s, as opposed to the 80s, 
there's a huge age gap and they're not going to hire somebody yeah. who's 60. They're, go they're going to hire somebody who's 30 or 40 because they're going to get a longer run out of them. Right. And for the first time in my life, that was something that I was confronted with and I'm still dealing with. It's, it was, it's kind of mind blowing to me. Yeah. It, it's definitely one of the biggest places that everyone, yeah. gay, straight, whatever, are experiencing ageism. It's in the professional world. Uh, my husband, who worked in corporate America his entire life, definitely saw ageism creeping up as his age was creeping up as well. I mean, even to the fact that uh, he's now retired, but one of his last jobs... Um, he was, you know, up on the C-suite with everybody, you know, CEO, CFO, CEO, you know, all of the big guys. So he had worked his way up through corporate America up to the top. And this company that he worked with, the way that they got rid of a lot of the older people, um, and it's not because of, you know, they need that experience, but the more experience and the older you are, the more expensive you are, right. you know? Yeah. And so they wanted to kind of whittle them out and how they did that was they moved their offices and they knew that none of the younger people or the older people who are established and have kids in schools and everything were going to go with them so Without it was their it was their kind of legal way of chopping away at at the yeah. uh, more the older experienced people and but, let's be real if you hire a 20 or 30 year old they're you know, ask, asking for a salary is going to be way lower than ours is. So that's yeah, actually but the, a good point, too. Which, yes, is definitely true. But also, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And if, you know, someone like Scott, who had been doing it for 40 years, they know everything, you know. Um, I mean, he, he retired. He was done with working. But the fact that they just get rid of all of these people with all of this experience in corporate America is really sad um and again it, it's gay straight whoever you yeah. are it that doesn't really matter in my own world um you know if you guys don't know i'm an image consultant for actors and models and i've been doing it for a very long time i was one of the premier guys who started doing this now everyone's copying me but uh i have a lot of experience i um you know agents send people to me production companies send people to me uh, we work on their branding and their imaging. For a while, I could feel ageism uh, because it was basically the like 28 to 32 year olds who were like, yeah, old man, I'm not listening to you, you know. Um, and for a while, I was really hit with the that same kind of age group females of color because they're like, yeah, old white man, we're not going to listen to you until they started noticing that some of these people that I worked with were having these flourishing careers and were winning awards and stuff. And then they were like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe he does know what he's talking about. Um, so I, I feel that in my world too, but I think because uh, my experience and track record kind of are right there in the forefront, it's not as bad as in corporate America. I'm not sure why, but I definitely feel have felt it as well. Um, but who doesn't? And maybe you know? in the entertainment industry, it is a little bit different. I and mean, that's why you might not feel it as much because you have all of a sudden there's this, which is awesome to see that older actresses and older actors are getting work again and they're being respected by the industry. Right. And it's unique in itself because that, like you said, it doesn't happen in corporate America. I'm curious, I have yeah. a question for you in regard yeah. to when you're confronted with a situation where you're getting that vibe from somebody where it's like, oh, old man, I don't need to listen to you. Yeah. Um, do you confront it directly? Do you say, look, I have this history? Like, how do, how do you deal with it? No, I don't do that. I mean, you can tell when someone is getting, you know, eh, and I, I just kind of like back off and be like, okay, these are just my opinions. Um, this is your career. You get to do whatever you want to do. But then it, they're the ones who like five years later are like knocking at my door going like, what was that that you said to me? Cause you know, I'm still waiting tables and I don't understand. Or, you know, some of the actors that I work with are the ones who kind of damage their careers and we have to kind of rebrand them. And, right. and when they don't kind of pay attention, then their careers are stalled and they're basically over. So basically 
I just have to step back and let it go and let them kind of figure it out by themselves. I get that. I totally get that. Yeah. Okay. So where else are we over 50 gay men experiencing ageism? We've talked about medically, professionally, definitely, uh, uh, socially, sexually. Is there anywhere else that we're being confronted with ageism? I think we covered the field pretty well here. Yeah. Do you, do you have any other thoughts on what other areas? like? Well, I, I think, I mean, it's everywhere. You know, even, I don't know where this fits in, but, you know, when you go to a restaurant, the way that a waiter talks to you, or when you go to the grocery store, the way that, you know, the checkout person talks to you, or um, I think we just hear it all over. You know, that kind of condescending tone or that being brushed off or what we're, we have to say doesn't really matter that much because we're just older or whatever. I just kind of feel like it's in every corner. It's everywhere that we go. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is. It's, it's a societal issue here, especially in the States, because, again, there is no respect or reverence for the older generation. It's just like, can you go away now? Right. I have my TikTok to make and you're in my, you're in my light. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know? How horrible is that? <laughs> All right. So now the big question is, what do we do? What do we do about this? Are we just going to roll over and just let it keep happening? Is there a way that we can confront it? For me? I, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, if I feel that from somebody, and again, it depends on the arena. You know, if I was at a job interview, I, I wouldn't go, you're discriminating me because I'm 60. Um, yeah. But in a social arena or um, a sexual arena, I do confront it. Um, and usually, it, you know, it's, it's greeted with, I'm willing to listen. And nobody's ever told me this before. So I think that responsibility in a lot of areas does fall on us to go, oh, hold, hang on a minute, because you know what? I'm not irrelevant. Don't call me daddy, because I'm not a fan <laughs> of that. Um, right. I just... I, don't it, yeah it, it has a whole different connotation for me it's like i don't because i've had people go could i call you daddy i'm like no <laughs> just please don't well, do that great yeah yeah so okay and, um yes but because i know confrontation isn't necessarily a thing you do we've talked about that so how do you yeah see sort that, of that's... tweak that and not overtly address it but sort of address it in a way that is healthier for you I don't know. I don't know what to oh. do. Like, you know, I'm obviously I still am bothered by the nurse at the doctor's office and the guy at the colonoscopy place. Uh, I don't confront things. I don't like confrontation at all. So uh, I I just take it in and then seethe about it and like complain. Uh, but there has to be something that we can do besides being confrontational. You know, um, I think one of the things you said earlier is very important. It's how we perceive ourselves. Yeah. Uh, you know, if if you are f shying away and feeling like, oh, well, I guess I'm just an older person. Yeah, and I'll whatever. just go sit in the corner as opposed yeah. to standing your ground. Because, I, you know, confrontational does have a negative connotation. But so let, let's just say more of overtly addressing a situation than being confrontational, because I don't like being confrontational because then nobody hears anybody else. Yeah, right. Um, it's just being willing to stand your ground and go, hang on a minute, who are you talking to? <laughs> you know, right. or just going, yeah, don't call me daddy. Um, there are just ways of dealing with it that aren't necessarily confrontational or it's, there's going to be conflict, but just, and again, like I said, it's usually greeted with this, oh, nobody's ever said that to me. Like one of my younger friends who I've known now known for since before COVID, when he first met me, called me daddy. And I was like, do not use that word. And it was just inherently in him to call older people daddy. And right. he doesn't do it anymore. Um, because he just never thought about it. It's just the way it was. Um, so yeah, I think addressing things is, is a healthy form of taking ourselves out of a shadow and representing well, ourselves in a different way. That I think is the biggest thing. It's, it's how we represent ourselves. One thing that I know you and I both hear a lot from gay men, uh, especially our age, is saying like, oh, you know, I just feel invisible in our community. Well, what community are you talking about? I mean, 
we here at No Two Gays about it have this amazing community of men who are over 50, who are, you know, contacting us and contacting each other and just talking. We're not invisible to each other. Maybe you're invisible to the 25 year old, but does that really matter to you? Like, is that how, how you're going to, you know, define yourself? I also have to present this question. Do you feel invisible because you find yourself retreating? And you're maybe part of the, you're perpetuating that idea? Um, or are you putting yourself out and not giving a rat's ass? Like, I, honestly, when I'm out, um, and if it's trivia night, if it's musical bingo, if it's whatever it is, I don't represent myself through my age. Um, that's not something that I carry with me. Right. So it, and I know it would be easy to do. It would be very easy just to sort of retreat and go, uh, I'm, you know, I'm over 60 and um, I just feel like I should go away. Yeah, but who are, who are they retreating from? Like I said, if you're retreating because of the 20 year olds don't want to date you, but look at all of these most amazing men who are over 50 that are out there. You're not invisible to them. So, I, I think we're doing this to ourselves in yeah. a way too. We're, but yeah, we're that was the on... point I was trying to make and probably didn't oh, do sorry. it as eloquently. <laughs> but um, that was just it. Are we doing this to ourselves in part? Yeah, totally. I, I think so. I mean, w- no, not professionally. Definitely. Right. We, it, it's, yeah, that's there, yeah. right? But socially. And sexually. And sexually too. Like I'm, I'm invisible to the 20 year old. Okay. But you're not to this amazing group of men over here. And it's just because you and your mind only want, I, I, well, I don't understand that, only want to be having sex with somebody younger than you and not someone your own age. But, you know, yeah, we're doing it to ourselves. We're, we're kind of putting this whole thing on ourselves in a way. I mean, I th- At least that's I, how I, th- I feel, you yeah, know? Being, you know, being out there and being in the dating world, um, there are a lot of guys my age who enjoy dating guys my age, um, and I'm yeah. one of them. Um, but in regard to maybe just focusing too much on the younger generation, there's a sense of validation that I know right. some people get from that. And maybe yeah. if we take a look at that, that's why I said you sort, of, you sort of got to take a look at both sides of the coin when it comes to social or sexual. Um, like, am I part of the problem? Am I getting in my own way? Um, yeah. And again, to, there are there's still going to be 20 year olds out there who enjoy the company of an older guy. It's just it's always been that way. Um, right. But is that what's going to validate you and make you feel better about yourself and your aging? I think then that's when it might get a little muddy. And you might need to take yeah. a look at it. I, I agree with you. And as we have seen, since we've been doing this show, the most amazing community of gay men out there are over 50 years old who have so much to offer and so much to give and you're not invisible to them there's no ageism there you know um i think i don't know i just want everyone to kind of look around you're not invisible definitely not to us um as I keep saying, we have this most amazing community that we're building. Um, for you, those of you out there, you ha- if you're commenting, commenting to us on YouTube, you, you're, you see all of these great men and you can comment to each other. We, we're building a community on Facebook. It's a private community, but you can join with us. We definitely have a community over at Patreon. And if you don't know what Patreon is, it's it's this really great place that helps support our show, keeps it going. Uh, you can join it for as little as a dollar a month, but there are all these different levels that you can join. And we have bonus material. Uh, we do a Savage Side Eye, a Happy Gay Moment. We do a No Two Questions about it every month, just so that you get to learn a little bit more about Michael. But it's a place where community can get together and talk to each other as well and we want you guys out there to tell us how you're affected by ageism because michael and i are just 
having a conversation here, but we want you all to join in. Yeah, and I can't tell you how much we really appreciate, especially on you know YouTube, where people do share so much in yeah. regard to their experience and their lives on the subjects we talk about. We appreciate that more than you could know, and your sharing your experiences, I think, helps build the community um, right. for us guys over 50 and, and just strengthens us and give us, gives us more strength to go out into the world because we realize we're not the only ones going through this crap. That's the thing. Yeah. We're all going through this, right? And let us know, how can we combat ageism? We're, we're going to have to keep talking about this because we're trying to get these this next chapter of our lives to be one of the best of our lives. And anything, any wall that we're hitting, like ageism, we want to break down. So let us know how you are dealing with ageism and what, what, what are things that you can help the rest of us learn about it and how to move past it. Yeah, and if you have any tools that you've sort of, you know, discovered in your toolbox for dealing with it, please share it because we right. really... We need to hear it. We're all going through this, you know? Exactly. And it's not just Michael and I. It's, it's all of us out there. Yeah. We, we all want to hear it. We all want to build each other up. And again, I just keep hearing people say in my head, like, oh, I'm just invisible to the community. No, you're not. You're not invisible to this part of our community. And it's an amazing part of our community. Um, we have all lived such varied and full and exciting lives and we need to share all of our experiences yeah. with each other and so if you guys do want to reach out to us you could hit us up at, across social media at no two gays about it and just remember it's the number two and again that's across social media and if you want to send us a more personal message um you could feel free to gmail us at no two gays about it at gmail.com and we will definitely get back to you because Believe it or not, Tom and I look at every single comment and we read every single comment and we answer every single email we get. So, um, yeah, we really want to hear from you. Yeah. And we, we so appreciate you guys. All right, Michael. So let's let's kind of sum this whole thing up. Ageism in our community. Yes, it's there. Nothing we can do about not it. Thing. It's there. It's there professionally, which is a really a hard one to deal with. Yeah, that feels because... like one that's a little bit out of our control on some level. Totally. You know, we can yeah. do what we do and we, rep we push forward as much as we can. But the bottom line in that venue, the decision is up to somebody else. But you know what? If a lot of gay men our age and older are men who own and operate companies... It's our plea to them, not a plea, but just like, hey, guys. No, let's call don't it a plea. I, 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 I'm, right. I'm good with that. I'm okay. pleading. Give me a fucking job. <laughs> oh That's God. the thing. <laughs> I want a regular You know how then. awesome oh my God. we all are. Yeah. You know, don't kick us out. Don't get rid of us. Use our experience. Um, yeah. So I guess that is kind of a plea to people out and there. And let's be real. Um, our generation has a work ethic. Oh, my God, Because right? we've had to, because a lot of us from the time we were teenagers and came out of the closet, really fended for ourselves and have taken care of ourselves every single step of the way. Right. And so we I have a work ethic. We also learned from our parents who, you know, the boomer generation out of World War II who really had that work ethic and were striving for the American dream. We saw that. So I think that helped spur that into ourselves, which yeah. is great. But all right. So professionally, yes, it's out there. We can't really do much unless we own a company or we are employing people. Uh, socially? Step out of the shadow. That's what I'm going to yeah. say. Don't, don't put baby in a corner. Because sometimes we do do that. Or, you know right. me and my pop culture references. I can't help myself. Um, okay. Sometimes we do that to ourselves where there's just this defeatist attitude. It's like, oh, I'm too old. I'm, I'm... Get that out of your vocabulary because you're not. Until, you, you know, until you're six feet under, you're not too old. Right. So socially and sexually, I think it's that same thing. It's, you know, we're, we're putting a lot of this on ourselves because we only want to appeal to a younger generation or we're trying too hard to, you know, we're dressing too young and we're trying to be too hip and cool and crazy instead of being these really mature, awesome men that we are, you know, dressing appropriately and 
talking appropriately and drinking and drugging appropriately and not pretending that we're 20, you know. Um, and we let's, can't, can we clarify the drugging appropriately <laughs> part of it? <laughs> well, I'm talking that we all take you're our... Like, you're not roofing somebody, right? No, no, no. I'm oh, talking okay. about like, you know, we're not out there doing crack, yes, but we're at okay. home taking right. our Lipitor and whatever else gets us through the day, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I didn't mean that anyway but i'm just and saying also i could I, I just want to do a really quick call back to how you said you perceive yourself and how why you couldn't be with anybody younger because of the judgment you're putting on your own body Let, yeah let's get that out of our head too let's just well, remember that freedom we had when we were younger sexually where you're you know if you had weight issues or like i did but that stuff comes into play but let's get that out of the picture too the way we perceive our own body and if somebody else loves our body let them love it let them love it. Well, I'm not putting judgment on my body. I'm just putting judgment on my body if I'm sitting next to a naked 25-year-old. And therein, that in lies my point. Let's take that out of the equation. Okay. Don't but, put the judgment on your body. Just don't. Love your body, okay. regardless of the age, regardless of the love handles, regardless of whatever. That's all I'm saying. But for me personally, you'll just don't do sit ne <laughs> naked next to a 25-year-old. <laughs> then you'll be fine. Note to self. You know? Right. Now, uh, when I have my naked pool party, I'm going to make sure you're not sitting next to a 25 year old. So, I'm not coming fear. to your naked pool party. I wouldn't if have there are going to be. I wouldn't have 25. a naked pool party. Ugh, I'm sorry. I'm naked no. every day in my pool, but I'm there, you know, alone, not with 25 year olds. So, <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. So I think it, it's also a perception about ourselves. There, there's just a lot that we can do to combat yeah. this ageism, and we just have to take control back yeah. and not not let people's opinions alter how we feel about ourselves right um and so, finding yeah. a healthy sense of self at our age right it's an everyday struggle that yeah. we have to just totally. keep on doing you know just love who you are and in fact how i end every session that i do when i'm working with people is by saying you are enough you don't have to be anything other than who you are. Love everything and own everything about yourself, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that goes for everybody out there. And I think if we can do that by realizing that we are enough, that maybe this ageism stuff, except professionally, won't really hurt or strike us as badly. Yeah. You know? But, like I said, we want to hear from you guys out there. So please, uh, and you know what, if you are watching us on YouTube, as Michael said earlier, make sure that you hit like and subscribe, please. but leave some comments for us. Let us know all you know and feel about ageism, because like I said, we're just starting this conversation and we want you guys to carry it on for us. Yeah. And uh, we actually have a couple of shout outs to our Patreon subscribers at the executive producer role. Um, cool. We just want to say thank you and thank you for your support and thank you for your faith in us. It's greatly appreciated. Um, Lauren Javier, John Bonasante, Ted Zalewski, Jason Cruz, and Kirk Bremer. Awesome. Thank you, guys. We want to say thank you so much for your support. It's, uh, yeah, it means more to us than you could possibly imagine. Yeah, we appreciate you. We appreciate all of you guys who are out there listening and watching us. Uh, let us know what you want us to talk about next, because we're up for it. All right, Michael, this has been awesome. Uh, own who you are and don't let those younger people take away any of your power. Until next time. Until next time. Thanks, Tom. And thank you guys for listening. Thanks. Thank you.